I have this 3D printer. It's a Chinese knockoff of a Prusa i3 type of printer. It has Arduino Mega type electronics and it's running on a Repetir firmware. I got tired of having to remove the SD card and then put it back in with a new G code every time I want to print something new. An alternative was to have it physically close to a laptop, but that also was annoying. The best way to solve this was to be able to control the printer remotely and Octoprint was the way to go. I will use Orange Pi instead of Raspberry Pi because of price and availability. I have my Orange Pi 02W here. Now I need to prepare the SD card. Any micro SD 16 gig or up is gonna work. Here I'm using a 32 gig. I will go to the orangepi.org official website for Orange Pi boards. Go to the hardware section, look for my hardware, which is the Orange Pi 02W. Then to the downloads section and scroll down to find the official images. In this case, I will be installing Ubuntu. So I click on downloads. It takes me to a Google Drive folder but uh, it's fine, I'll just get the latest version, six, Linux 6.1 kernel version, and then download the latest Ubuntu Noble, and there's gonna be a 1.3 gig image I'm gonna be downloading, and just let it download. The image is compressed in 7-zip format, so you will need 7-zip. If you don't have it, you can go download it from the official website, install it, and then you can just extract the file inside of this uh, 7-zip uh, compressed file. You actually want to end up with a .img file. That's the actual image file we're gonna be using. You will see this file is about six and a half gigs of size. Then you will need software to flash the image file into the SD card. I recommend downloading Balena Edger this is a free software you can use for the purposes of just flashing the file into the SD card. You can also use the Raspberry Pi Imager. That's going to work too, but uh, I like this one. So just download and install Balena Etcher. Now you can connect your SD card to your computer, either via SD adapter if you have a way to connect it directly to the laptop, or I am using a USB SD card adapter. Up to you how you connect it. And once you can see your SD card already in your system, open Balena Etcher, select the option flash from file, go find that IMG file with the image that we extracted earlier. Then select the target. In this case, choose the drive which contains your SD card and then click on flash and then just wait until it finishes. Uh, in my case, the whole process took about five, six minutes. And once it's done, you get this message, flash completed. Now I will assume you have the adapters to connect the Orange Pi to an external monitor. That's a mini HDMI to HDMI adapter. And also you will need a USB-C uh, to USB-A uh, OTG type adapter so you can connect the external keyboard and mouse. If you do have these elements, now is the time to connect the Orange Pi to the monitor and keyboard so we can connect to Wi-Fi manually using these elements. If you don't have this and you want to have just a headless Orange Pi, you still have to work on the SDI card to set up Wi-Fi connectivity information. I'm going to cover that on a different video, not this one, so check the description if you don't have external monitor and keyboard for the Orange Pi. Now, you connect the power supply to the Orange Pi, you're gonna get a green blinking light. That's good news, everything's in order. The first boot is gonna take a while, a couple of minutes, I don't know, up to five. And then you're gonna get Orange Pi on your screen. That's good news. Now you can go to the Wi-Fi icon on the top right. Just select your Wi-Fi, enter your password, be sure you're connected to Wi-Fi. Once you have Wi-Fi connectivity, you can check the Wi-Fi details. Here you want to see what is the IP address that has been assigned to the Orange Pi. If we did not have a monitor connected to the Orange Pi, it would be extra steps to find out what is the IP address. But uh, in this case, we can just look at here. We know what it is. We need this information for what's coming. Once the Orange Pi system started and Wi-Fi is connected, it's time to start uh, entering a few commands. You can enter these commands directly into a terminal inside of the Orange Pi OS via keyboard and screen if it's connected this way 
or if you want to enter the commands remotely because that's what I find more comfortable you can just go to your Windows laptop and as long as you're in the same network as the Orange Pi you can use PowerShell and do the command SSH space Orange Pi at and then you enter the IP that we just got from the Orange Pi that's the IP address of the Orange Pi if you're asked for a password, the password is Orange Pi. I personally prefer to use Putty as a Windows application to connect via SSH to the Orange Pi. Same thing, you just enter the IP address for this uh, Orange Pi, and then you're going to be asked for a username and password. That's Orange Pi for the username, Orange Pi for the password. Once you have access to the Orange Pi terminal, doesn't matter if it's locally uh, or via SSH uh, inside of the network. Now you can start entering some commands. These commands you can find in the description or just find the link that I left in the description. The first of the commands uh, is going to be used to install dependencies, meaning a bunch of stuff that uh, Orange Pi is going to need to run the Octoprint. In reality, this is a bunch of commands, but uh, because it's Linux allows to separate these uh, commands with semicolon, you can see a, a semicolon here and there. So just uh, copy paste this one line and just paste it inside of the terminal and just press enter. It's gonna ask you for a password. Remember that's orange Pi again, and then just let it work. It's gonna take a while. In my case, it took about 35 minutes to complete the whole thing. After the first five minutes or so, I got this uh, question asking for some user input. I just selected yes, or in this case, why, enter. Boom, the whole thing continues. And also, uh, at one point, I was, I was asked to enter the password again, and then just, uh, again, Orange Pi, enter, boom, the thing continues. Just wait until you have the prompt again, and, and the thing reaches 100% and it's done. Then we're ready to take the second command. The following command also, uh, it's actually multiple commands with uh, some semicolons connecting them, so it's just one line you copy-paste into your terminal. This command is going to actually do the installation of Octoprint itself, uh, into your Orange Pi. Just let it run. This time it will be faster. In about three minutes, you'll be done with that part. Then it's time to create a configuration file. So you're going to use a command that is going to open a sort of text editor on the terminal screen where you're working. So just paste the command, press enter. This will open this uh, text editor. Now you want to copy paste the text that is under the section called contents. Uh, it's a bunch of lines. Just select everything, copy, paste, like I'm doing on screen. And now you want to save the changes and exit the editor. So to do that, you're going to do control O, basically save your changes, and then press enter. Control X to exit this uh, text editor. After exiting the text editor, now we have to use this other command to activate the Octoprint service, meaning Octoprint is already in the Orange Pi, but it's not running yet. So again, just uh, copy paste this line. You copy paste uh, this line, sudo space dash i, that you can see that on the left uh, of your prompt, now it says root. You copy paste this uh, other command here. And finally, uh, use the command exit. And by doing that, you have configured permissions and you will be able to restart Octoprint uh, remotely. Now you're definitely done. And you can already disconnect from SSH. You can disconnect the monitor and keyboard. No longer needed. You're done. You no longer need your monitor, but uh, probably you still need your USB-C to USB-A adapter if your printer is uh, like mine, Arduino-based. Uh, now it's a good time to connect your printer if you want it. Uh, the key thing is that now you can go from any browser in your network, uh, for example, your main laptop's uh, browser, enter the IP address uh, that we already know, that's the IP address from the Orange Pi, colon 5000, and you will see the Octoprints UI launching. And first you will get the setup wizard. Uh, probably you want to set up the access control part so you have a username and password to log in to this UI. Uh, keep this handy because you're going to be using it every time you log in uh, do something most of these options you can be skipped or are optional the one that is important especially if you did the last step of the configuration you want to go to server commands here 
the line that says restart octoprint, you want to paste this line. Then you check some boxes and you're done. This is the main UI screen from octoprint. At this point, you should try to connect your uh, printer. Just let the automatic options to connect. Uh, if you get a message saying that it could not be detected, just try restarting octoprint and then you're able to connect and you're good. And now, just to give it a try, I'm using my phone's browser to go to the Octoprint uh, IP and I am moving my nozzle remotely. Uh, I can also I can do everything remotely from any browser. No longer need to connect my printer to any laptop. I no longer need to use the SD card if I don't want to. And that's it. Enjoy your Octoprint in your orange pie.